it and the winners especially is were the, they able to or how did I think they'd be able to communicate um, the general topic of climate change and why it's so important to talk about it and really think about the future to maybe a non-scientific audience, a non-artistic audience, um, just a general audience who might not have knowledge in either of those backgrounds. Awesome, thank you so much. So Emily, um, let's talk a little bit about the ones that you made, um, you awarded, and I'm going to copy over our link for the virtual exhibition and post it in the chat so that everybody um, can take a look at it together. Hold on one second. Okay, so I posted the link in the chat of our virtual exhibition. If everybody wants to bring that up in their browser. So our first place winner is Susan O'Hanlon with her sculpture, ceramic and walnut sculpture, uh, Planet B Ain't Pretty. Um, and I want Emily to go ahead and talk about her choice for why that uh, one's first place and then, you know, create a dialogue between Susan and, and Emily. Yeah, I thought that if there was a piece that entirely summed up my feelings about the topic climate change, uh, this was it. Not only did I think the, the composition was great, obviously um, the craftsmanship is gorgeous. Uh, it conveys to any viewer who walks up and looks at it that one side is good, one side is bad, which part are we gonna go for, you know? Um, we have this huge, beautiful, giving, amazing earth that we can either uh, feed and um, protect and save and appreciate, or if we obviously head down the wrong path and we can end up with something charred and ugly and we can't use anymore. Um, so I think, like I said, this piece really summed up the entire exhibit and topic of climate change the best. Yeah, I totally fully agree with that. Susan, did you want to speak at all to your piece? Sure, I'd love to. Thank you. Thank you both of you for coordinating this event. Um, thank you also to today. And I want to point out John Carville. He is um, uh, my partner in this piece. He uh, was the woodworker behind uh, Planet Being Pretty and really added um, a huge depth to the piece in terms of uh, the whole pedestal idea was John's uh, to lift our earth up, our, our current, you know, where we are now and our beautiful earth um, lifted up. I remember when I, I said something to him about um, burning the piece of wood that he had this gorgeous piece of walnut and, and he cringed and, um, and ultimately uh, got right really into it. And he might want to speak to that because I remember a really fun encounter with him and he had his whole family kind of getting into charring that, that right side of the piece of wood. So um, I'm so glad that you saw what uh, we envisioned when we created the piece, Emily. Um, you know, I, I care so much about uh, the earth and, and climate justice issues. And um, I'm really happy to have a piece that I'm able to share with the world to convey that. So thank you. Mm -hmm. And John, you're you're welcome to speak to your uh, half of the piece if you'd like as well. Oh well, I appreciate it. No, number one, thank you, uh, and thank you, Susan, for recognizing my part of this. Uh, I, I don't feel my portion was very large. This was uh, all Susan's vision, um, although we did discuss it, and uh, I recall saying how much fun this collaboration was and it spurred additional collaboration work between myself and a couple of other artists as well. Um, but, but the piece itself, uh, you know, I agree with everything that's been said. It really does very nicely convey the idea behind it. Um, and, and it was fun to make, I'll give it that, you know, charring beautiful lumber isn't something that I'm used to doing, but under the circumstances, it was a, a fun challenge, uh, and it meant something to do it. So, uh, 
you know, it all came together very well and it was a lot of fun. Great. Okay. So our second place winner is um, Barbara Ayala Rug Deal. I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> and it's her piece on the shoulders of giants. Emily, did you want to speak a little bit about um, why this was uh, given an award? Sure. Um, I really liked this piece. I thought that it was interesting to look at, uh, lots going on, awesome use of different kinds of materials, mixed media. Um, so not only is it fun to look at for the viewer, but also it really conveys the, the natural resources, the renewable resources that we have available to us um, that we can either use and uh, continue to protect or kind of like I said before, go the other way and continue down that path of uh, destroying those resources rather than renewing them and um, appreciating them for what they are. So I thought this piece, like I said, going back to the being able to understand from a non-scientific or non-artistic point of view, um, I think that it's it conveys everything that we need to in this kind of exhibit to a general public kind of audience. Yeah. And Barbara, would you like to speak about your piece? Sure. Yeah, thank you so much um, for that. And also just looking at the whole exhibit is really a really nice exhibit. So it was um, created for a show called Heroes and Villains. So then I was looking at kind of my own um, climate heroes. And then for, for this show, I thought it worked really well because you know, the call to action, what will you do to help um, uh, as an environmental educator as well, just looking at kind of um, playing on that bigger picture of, you know, the, the things we need to do are, are kind of sometimes bigger scale. So that renewable energy and also um, uh, activism. And so I thought, um, so in here are Greta Thunberg and Autumn Peltier. So they're kind of two um, climate activists, young climate activists that are important to me that are, you know, working and coming up against these things and really um, calling for that change. So um, I thought that was, uh, you know, inspiring and really kind of the big picture things of what we need to do to protect um, some of these uh, environments. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's a really great um, explanation that gives me a lot more insight to that piece and makes me appreciate it even that much more. Okay, so our third place winner um, is by Debbie Hed Hedgedis, Hedgedis, and it's Broken Earth. Um, I'm not sure if Debbie is with us. No, she's not. So we'll just have um, Emily talk a little bit about that selection. Yeah, so I think this piece, um, I chose it because it speaks on a more spiritual level than some of the other pieces um, did. And something that's not, I don't know, as an environmental educator, we are always programmed to kind of be more scientific and obviously make that emotional connection to the earth. But I think that the spiritual aspect of kind of an all-seeing or guiding power that may not be able to interact with us directly, but that kind of Mother Earth entity is something that we don't talk about in formal education as much, but it's still such an important aspect of how we interact with the Earth and the world around us. Um, so I thought that this spoke more to that side of things, um, and I really appreciated the dynamics between, you know, the perils that humanity ourselves can face um, in the future if we don't address climate change, but also the repercussions for this mother nature being, as I said, um, and the repercussions for the flora, fauna, forests, lands, everything that isn't directly us and so human centered as much. Mm. Yeah, so if you guys were able to look at this on the virtual exhibition or in person, um, it has this remarkable portrait with a third eye um, that's kind of coming out three-dimensionally. It's, it's really great. So it definitely speaks to that 
to the spiritual level of that. So we also have um, two honorable mentions. Let me just flip through here and get to those and then we'll talk about those a little. So um, one of the honorable mentions goes to Dave Pettengill, um, his piece, High Tides. It's a concrete sculpture. Emily, would you like to talk about that piece? Yeah. Um, so I really liked this because it got me thinking about all kinds of different environmental topics. You know, high tides, obviously a play on um, tide detergent using the concrete base there. So thinking about how we can reuse things like that in art and different aspects of our lives. Um, and obviously the high tide has multiple meanings for the important topics that we're talking about, um, environmental issues, climate change, um, rising water levels um, and things like that. So I really enjoyed this one. I thought it was um, very, I thought it portrayed the, um, the topic very well. And Dave is here with us today. So Dave, if you'd like to talk about your piece, um, you're mute, muted right now. So go. you'll have to unmute yourself in the bottom yeah. corner there. There we go. Uh, Thanks, everybody. Um, yeah, so <laughs> my work tends to be a little bit um, scattered. So to find a find a show that I feel I could probably dump half of my work into was a, was a rare find. Uh, a lot of my work revolves around environmental stuff, man made versus natural. Um, and it, but it's I try not to be. I try to lean a little heavier on poetics. So the one with the tides, it's uh, actually Phragmites reeds, which are a, a grass species. They're uh, super prolific in terms of their growth. Um, the plastic tide, obviously the two, two meanings of tide there. Um, but then also kind of smaller issues, microcosmic issues like, um, uh, the sulfites that you find in laundry detergent that, uh, if they get into the water systems kind of, um, can choke out natural, uh, bacteria and cause, cause several different kind of algae blooms and those kind of things. Uh, it's never really a, a, a one, um, a one to two it's never a easy linear conversation with my work so uh the thing that i uh kind of rely on is that it has all that meaning embedded in it and i can you know you can discuss it whether it's scientific or or environmental or poetics it's it's working on all those levels so it it kind of it it's easy on the eyes but it, it has a lot of uh a lot of a lot of layers going on underneath that can uh can give it a little weight um, like the concrete, the weight. Um, but, um, yeah, thanks for including me in the show. I was happy to, happy to be part of it. Thank you. Okay. Um, flipping through here for the next one. So, um, the last honorable mention here is by Max Henderson. It's collapsing into the void and in parentheses, it's all together now. Um, I don't think Max, no, Max is not with us. So we'll have Emily talk about that. I think this piece, it also brought into the topic of reuse, um, reusing things like magazines, newspapers um, into other, other venues such as art. Um, it's got a little darker, you know, touches on some topics. Um, or some of the, the titles and things that he used. Um, it's, to me, it made it easier for um, an outside viewer to be able to look at that and say, oh, that was published in a paper. You know, that is, that, that's reality. You know, they see that it's written text, um, something that's easily conveys emotion um, through that collage. So I would have, I would have liked to, to learn some more about it and learn a little bit more about what, um, why the artist chose to put some of the images and text in, but I thought it was a, a very nice, well-rounded piece to include. Mm. Awesome. Well, there are quite a few artists with us now. Um, I wanted to open it up to uh, maybe discussing their pieces if, if they would like to. Um, if we want to, we can start with, uh, I'll just start at the first row. Anita, if you wanted to speak about your piece, hers is the photography um, of the milkweed. Um, 
You would have to unmute yourself if you wanted to talk about it, Anita. Okay, we'll move on. Um, way, let me get to yours. So Way Hugh had um, a bit of an incident with hers. So we had two accepted pieces, um, one titled Red Sun, which didn't make it to the in-person show, but it is on our virtual exhibition. Uh, and then she also had a smaller piece. If I can get to that one. Manic Earth. So, um, Emily, did you want to talk about these two pieces and why you chose two of, of Away Hughes pieces and then she can talk about them? Yeah, let me find them. There we go. Um, yeah, I like these pieces. Um, I could definitely tell they were, they went together, you know, they were part of a series together. Um, and I think, there we go. Um, I think that these pieces, I chose them because they did speak on that kind of more um, abstract, more, you had to think a little deeper about them and they're beautiful pieces in and of themselves. Um, and, you know, you kind of get led, shoot, I'm sorry. <laughs> there we go. Um, the title helps kind of helps guide you um, and to, to understand the pieces a little bit more. Um, so I would like to know, your thoughts and, and how you were able to create them. Um, you're absolutely right that they were part of a series. And I've been doing these paintings, sort of thinking about climate change, um, but also thinking about mental health and the sort of correlations between the two, because I think capitalism has, you know, led to a lot of problems on both fronts. Um, so I've been working with kind of using landscape as a metaphor for the mind um, and thinking through sort of um, this, this stress that we're all under that the world is under, but also individual sort of interior um, lives through this need to kind of create more, to produce more, to use more, um, and just consume all of the time. And, and sometimes, you know, what's being consumed is not replaceable within ourselves. Definitely, I wanted to kind of speak about that just because of the abstract element of it. Um, compared to something that was a little bit more literal. Um, is there any other artists that wanna speak about their work? Like Pia, um, I think Kathy also has one. Sure, sure. I could, I could talk about my work. Okay, if let's you want. start with Pia. Um, so okay, so my that. main piece is um, Invasion. Yeah, yeah, your and, largest invasion. Right. And um, there's a polar bear, and in the distance, a cruise ship. And um, so I've been working on a series of paintings on the Arctic since um, I came back from the Arctic, an Arctic cruise in May of 2019. And um, one of the, there, there are many themes, and, but, but talking just about this one, one of the things that I was aware of is that I felt incredibly privileged to be in this beautiful, incredible place, uh, which, by the way, has a lot of evidence of, of human contact. It's, it's not like it's completely, you know, as you might imagine, completely empty but as 
as I was there, I was realizing that I definitely was an intruder. And we and our cruise ship were, in a way, not meant to be there. So there's an ambiguity about my feeling um, and about, you know, should we be there? Should we not be there? That I, I realized, you know, once I was there, yes, rules were followed in terms of visiting and how long you could stay on a piece of land and, and so on and so forth. They were, you know, things are very well regulated. But still, um, I think this particular piece speaks both, you know, speaks to the ambiguity of appreciating the landscape and these incredible um, animals that live in it. Um, and also feeling like, hmm, well, I'm, perhaps I would be more helpful. What can I do to help not being there? On the other hand, I can also be helpful by bringing this kind of beauty to the attention of others. Yeah. Yeah, I think you could, I could tell that there was definitely a personal, a more personal connection um, with it. So, so thank you for sharing that and enlightening us. Sure. Welcome. And then, um, Kathy, you said you wanted to speak about yours as well. Sure. Um, my painting is Honor the Common Yellowthroat Family. And the reason um, I created it is um, I'm an avid bird watcher. And I have quickly realized, even when I started bird watching, that there are so many more birds um, in our own area that people are totally unaware of. I mean, people know, usually know cardinals and blue jays and maybe a little more advanced um, bird watchers know the, um, the juncos um, and maybe can tell different um, sparrows but people don't really understand how much um, migration of uh, birds we have here in our area. You don't have to go to Africa, Australia, um, Costa Rica to see amazing birds. Um, the common yellowthroat is a actually very common bird that um, can nest around here, but also migrates through here right now. Um, if you take a walk, in the woods, I, I routinely walk through Cheslin Preserve and you hear a little chirp um, down in the, um, in the goldenrod. Many times it is a common yellowthroat. And I decided to paint the, the three different um, common sites of the common yellowthroat, the mature male, which is what many people see in the springtime standing up on a snag um, singing its heart out, but then kind of hidden is usually the female and the immature male. Um, and I just, I try to share bird watching with children and other people to let them know how wonderful our own environment here is um, in Chester County and we need to preserve it. And I think we're doing a pretty good job of it. But unfortunately, so many of our warblers migrate down to South America, Central America, where their winter habitats are being destroyed and um, how we need to work to save them. But I feel at least my little part is that I could share um, what our beautiful birds are that um, fly through this area and some that reside here that people just are not aware of. Yeah, and that's, that's kind of exactly why I chose your piece, Kathy, um, because I think that sometimes we do just need a reminder of these beautiful birds and these beautiful things that we have that we need to protect. Um, we need some motivation every now and then. Thank you very much for allowing me to be in the show. Okay, so I'm going to go back to Anita now. Um, she stepped away for a minute, but she's back. So Anita created um, the photographer, uh, the photograph milkweed. Anita, did you want to talk about your piece? Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm having trouble going back and forth. So I took a picture of a of a milkweed uh, because, well, I love photography and I love plants, and we have 15 acres that we try to preserve as many natives as we can, which is really a hard task. So I just thought the milkweed with the seeds was a uh, image of hope. 
Yeah. Thank you. All right. Is there um, any comment you want to make about that, Emily? Or is there any other artist that wants to talk about their pieces? Um, yeah, same thing. Um, kind of like I told Kathy, I liked the milkweed. It is a very hopeful sign seeing those seeds. Um, another just one of those beautiful things that you have to keep in mind. And milkweed is such a hot topic. Um, monarch migration, always a hot topic. Um, so that's always another component of environmental education uh, and protection that we, as an educator, um, is always something we're talking a lot about. So I thought it was nice to include it in the exhibit. Great. Okay, so I think now then we will just open it up to some Q&A if anyone has questions for Emily. Hmm. That's rare to not have any. <laughs> I know we had we had Bill in here. I do have video. a question. Okay. Um, I'm just, um, you know, what you do out there and and how it impacts and uh, and you know how many people you see that type of thing. If you could share, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. Um, so in a typical or normal year, um, we reach thousands of school children. We do teach from pre-K all the way up to seniors in high school, but most of our education is probably centered around the third to fifth grade. Um, that just seems to be the age group that um, honestly travels the most. You know, once they end up getting to high school, I feel like their field trips get uh, a little fewer and far between, at least in the area that we're at. Um, so that third to fifth year or fifth grade age range is usually who we reach, but we do a series of um, educational programs aimed more at families. So it might be some art workshop that we bring a local artist in and teach, or we might do like we were supposed to do a wildflower walk or a salamander search this spring. Um, so right now, obviously, everything is a little up in the air. So we are looking at more virtual options. Um, and I think that will even increase our reach um, even more, even though it's been a struggle for, I'm sure, not only ourselves, but um, formal educators across the board, too. So now we're looking at how we can extend our reach um, even beyond our kind of local area. Um, we do... We are kind of in the middle of nowhere. It's a beautiful area. We have 500 acres of hiking trails and kind of outdoor classroom, as I like to call it. So um, with COVID-19 and everything that it's affected, it is kind of forcing us to look bigger picture and see how we can um, make connections and kind of expand our reach and our education. So if- Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't know if, anybody's familiar, but Ned Smith was a wildlife artist. Um, he was big in like the 60s, 70s, into the 80s, and he passed away um, in the early 80s. And after he passed, his wife, Marie, uh, kind of took it upon herself to make sure that a lot of his art was preserved. And uh, a bunch of his, um, the people who know him the best, his friends, his artist friends, his outdoor friends, kind of got together to create the center. Um, so that's why we try to focus on not only art education, but also nature education, because he was, um, I always like to say, uh, first he was a naturalist and then he was an artist. So he was always concerned um, and most focused on the nature aspect. So he wouldn't go in and um, like Audubon is kind of controversial because he oftentimes shot a lot of the birds that he ended up painting. Um, Ned was all about just sitting and waiting no matter how long it took, if it was two hours, if it was three hours, if it was a whole day of waiting for a bird to come back to its nest so he could paint it in the proper habitat so that he always remained that naturalist at heart and then really used his art to convey that aspect of it. Oh, that's wonderful. I didn't mm -hmm. know that at all. Yeah, so that's kind of what we try to do at the center. We want to always make sure that we have the bigger picture, um, bigger picture in mind and not getting too focused on on either art or nature, trying to tie them in together. 
Wonderful. Are there any other questions for Emily or anything pertaining to the exhibition? <laughs> I don't have any questions at all, Emily, but I was, I've been reading up on your um, on the center there and I hope someday to get up there and uh, and to visit. It sounds like a fantastic place to um, to bird watch, um, take some friends and maybe even uh, drag my husband along to make sure he gets some nature. Um, it, it, I didn't realize it existed, so I'm really thrilled that uh, you were asked to um, be the juror for the show I was able to find out about your center. Yeah, and thank you, uh, Caitlin, obviously for reaching out. Um, I'm glad it worked out. I think that it was it was fun, um, enlightening to, to be able to juror, to be able to see all these wonderful pieces. Um, and I'm honored that I, I had the chance to, to be able to, to be a judge for it. Yeah, Tony, Tony was the first to suggest you and um, we thought you guys would be the perfect fit for an exhibition like this. And we obviously this was the perfect fit, I think. So thank you so much, Emily. We really appreciate it. Um, this exhibition turned out to be really well done and it did justice to what our, one of our founders, Jay Eaton, wanted this to really jog the brains of everyone who comes to see it. And I think we did just that with this exhibition. So thank you so much. Tony, thank did you, you want to say anything before we go? Um, the, uh, thank all of you for, um, first of all, for taking uh, the show into a question and sending your work in. Thank you so much to Emily. Um, I don't know how many of you have been to the Ned Smith Center. It was, um, I'm a musician, but that was my first um, performance outside of college back in oh, 2011. Cool. Um, and I, I, uh, I had been up to the center a few times and I, I talked to Jay and a few other, a lot of my students about it. Um, if you haven't had a chance to visit, it's, it's amazing up there. Um, and, uh, also, um, there's, if you look at their website, um, Emily, I'm not to put another plug in for Ned Smith center, but, um, oh, go for it. <laughs> it's, um, uh, this past year, uh, you know, I thought that this would be the, the perfect way to um, combine what um, Jay, unfortunately, is not here, but he's one of the founders of the Arts Alliance, and he really wanted to find a way to bring art um, and uh, nature together to answer this question of what we'll do for it. Um, and I, you know, immediately thought that this was a great, uh, great opportunity to start connecting with Ned Smith and starting to connect the Chester County community to um, some of the things that they have available. Um, if you haven't had a chance to see some of their programming or, or have a trip up there, please do so. It's it's fantastic. So thank you all. It's um, wonderful to see everyone here. I'd like to ask a question. Is this, is the center open now? It is, yes. We are, we are currently open um, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Tuesday to Saturday. Uh, so we do have, we have, like I said, we have hiking trails, um, and then we also have three gallery spaces. One is dedicated to Ned Smith's work, usually original pieces, and then we have two rotating exhibits. Um, one usually features a local artist, and the other one might be a little bit bigger of an exhibit. Um, I'm trying to think of what the next one is. I know in the spring we will be um, inviting DCNR, Game Commission, Fish and Boat, um, and then ourselves participating in a, an exhibit featuring um, the Environmental Protection Act. I'm sorry, I forget what exactly the terminology, but it's basically celebrating Pennsylvania's Green Amendment. Um, next year marks 50 years of that. Um, Pennsylvania is one of only two states that has it written in our constitution that we have the right to public green space um, and the protection of such. So uh, like I said, one gallery is kind of devoted to a rotating um, bigger uh, exhibit as well. So if anybody would ever like to come, um, track me down. I'm there throughout the week and I'd be glad to give you the full tour and, and let you look around. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. 
Okay, so we have about two minutes left. If anybody has another question, we'll go with that. Otherwise, we will wrap up this juror talk here. All right, I'll take your silence as <laughs> we are gonna wrap this up. Again, thank you so much, Emily. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Emily. Um, thank you all to the exhibiting artists as well. And thank, you. thank you, Caitlin and Anthony. Thank you. And thanks, yes. Caitlin. To everybody. Yeah, thank thank you all. Okay, hey, great. Well, then, everybody, I hope you have a great Sunday. You as well. <laughs> you too. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.